Hello and welcome to another out of spec reviews video. Guys, on this channel we talk a lot about DC charging and specifically DC fast charging. We're always on the hunt for the fastest charging possible. Just recently we were demonstrating 1.2 megawatts of charging power is just absolutely insane. We're always on the hunt for new 350 kilowatt chargers out in the public. But I thought it'd be kind of cool to talk, actually bring it back down to earth a little bit and talk about level two charging. Actually something that is probably more useful than DC fast charging for most of us and something we don't talk about enough. So in this video, I have a couple examples of some level two chargers, the use case, the reason I prefer these two chargers and recommend them. And um, so that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're over here at Clear Detailing where we film all of the out of spec detailing videos. If you don't subscribe to that channel, check it out. And um, we just installed some chargers here. So let me show you what we did, what Colton's got going on, how the whole layout's gonna work from a charging process and why probably we should put a little bit more focus onto level two EVSEs rather than DC fast chargers. <laughs> Before we actually get into these specific units and why I wanna highlight them, I think it's important to mention that EVSE term I just used. Now, out of spec reviews, the viewer of this channel, you guys, you know EVSE probably, we're all nerds, but that means electric vehicle supply equipment. Uh, technically, like a level two station at your house or even a wall outlet, those are not chargers. They're commonly referred to as chargers. You'll even hear me calling them chargers. I think it's commonplace but just as a at a technical level, level two, level one are EVSEs. By the way, no such thing as level three. Technically, it's DC fast charging. I mean, there is technically a level three, but let's just, you know, DC fast charging is not level three. Um, that's DC charging. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, I'll explain just briefly how these EVSEs work. Essentially, we have an AC power connection into the car here. This is using the J1772 port. It goes into an onboard charger, which that's the actual charger. And that basically brings the input voltage from AC. It, uh, you know, let's say 208 volt here. It converts that whole system or that whole power to DC and then charges the battery pack at pack voltage. What's kind of cool is superchargers or other DC fast chargers are basically just AC chargers from cars stacked up. Now they're not exactly the same components unless you look at version two superchargers. Version two superchargers are like the old uh, Model S onboard chargers just in a stack in a cabinet, it's pretty cool. But they all do pretty much the same thing. It's all about AC to DC power conversion, voltage control, and then controlling the current into the battery pack. So when you put a level two charger at your house, the reason it's relatively inexpensive and something we recommend every EV driver who can to do is because all you really have to do is hook it up to your uh, grid connection. So let me show you how that kind of works and, and goes. And I know I'm being extremely basic for many of you, but I think it's a good starting point as we talk more about level two and other AC charging stuff. So this is a typical service panel. This one's got a lot of junk in it. And we have two Autel units hooked up to it here. We have a 70 amp unit going to this particular, uh, this uh, particular EVSE. This 70 amp breaker feeds this at 50 amps constant. Uh, the, the interesting thing with this is you can't just hook up a 70 amp breaker to a 70 amp charger or EVSE. You technically need to be 20% under your load rating. And that's just for a safety buffer, for heat management. It's mostly for heat because most electrical components in the U.S. are rated for 100% duty cycle, you know, flat out for only three hours. Electric cars charge for a lot more than three hours. So that's why the 20% the under rule stands. So we wanted to put this up to 50 amps. We could have derated it down to 40 amp, uh, 48 amp and put a 60 amp breaker in. We actually did that with the unit over here just because of electrical supply constraints. But uh, for this one, we wanted to max it out. We had the extra capacity. So we said, yep, let's throw in a 70 amp to feed this 50 amp unit. In terms of the actual wiring here, it's very simple. You have pretty much three lines that come out of here and into your uh, charger. They're typically your two power lines, a positive, a negative, and your ground. Uh, no neutrals typically for AC charging. It's not, not so needed. So you have three wires that come out of here, black, red, and ground, hooks up into the charger. And then this is, you know, basically the unit that you can install. Now, of course, there's a ton of different um, EVSEs on the market and they range in varying quality and varying capabilities. And honestly, it's pretty hard to figure out what's 
out there and what's going in and out. Um, I'm actually a viewer of Tom Malagny's State of Charge YouTube channel. He's also a friend of mine and he does amazing uh, charger reviews, hardcore testing, drop tests, freeze tests. And um, I noticed how well Autel did in his testing. I also have made some videos with John Thomas, COO of Autel over at CES when we did a whole video on their DC charging programs. And I thought, okay, Autel's really coming up. This seems like really cool stuff. The one downside to the early Autels were the cable actually. And that's something Tom noted, it's something I noted, that the cable's fine, it functions totally okay, um, but it actually got pretty crinkly and stuff. So I was like, eh, you know, if, if they can fix the cable, this is kind of the perfect unit. And the news is they fixed the cable. And that's what I wanted to show you in this particular video. We had a new unit come over, I'll explain what these do in a second, but the really the only complaint that Tom and I had about these uh, EVSEs were the cable, and it's completely redone. It's no longer crinkly plastic feeling. You could leave it out in the cold, and it's an improvement. I definitely wanna see how Tom does with this test, but just us moving it around the shop, and it's fairly chilly in here, this has been a much improved, ex much improved experience over the previous generation. So we installed this Autel EVSE to give it a go, to play around with its capabilities. And this is the residential version. This is a 50 amp hardwired version. You can also get a 40 amp NEMA 1450 connection. Personally, if you can have one hardwired, that's my preference. I just think it's a little bit safer. You're removing one connection point. We've seen if you use a low grade NEMA 1450 adapter that sometimes they melt a little bit. Just use high quality components that shouldn't be unsafe, but having it hardwired just removes a connection point. But if you sell your house, if you just wanna bring the, the unit with you when you go, certainly going with a NEMA 1450 is an option. For us, we wanted to have the most available power. We got a lot of 200 amp service to this uh, building right here. So we decided to go for the hardwire unit and hook it up to its maximum 50 amp output, which required again, that 70 amp breaker, because if we went for a 60 amp breaker, we would be over that 20% buffer. So we put in a juicy breaker and some juicy lines and it handles it just fine. And this thing has, we've, we've pretty much abused it. We've run it out, slammed it in the doors, charged it outside. And it's, it's honestly held up extremely well just the cable is, is fine. It looks like it did on day one. It's just not that high quality. So this is the residential unit. If you were to buy one now, it should ship with the new cable, which will be really great. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys think about that. We recently got this unit installed, and by recently, I mean like 15 minutes ago. And this is the new-ish charge, uh, charging unit from Autel, which is a commercial grade situation which means rather than just having the black glass screen, more or less, I think it's plastic, but black screen here, it now has a screen inside of it. And you can see we've been charging for 17 minutes. Yep, so we installed it 17 minutes ago. <laughs> it's doing 48 amps, pretty much consistent, 47.9. I love how specific they are. We have 206.5 volts, and uh, that's because we're at 208. There's a bit of a run, so we lose a couple volts under SAG, um, but it's actually not too bad. And Colton has been able to program his electricity cost into here, which is about nine cents per kilowatt hour. And you can see it even calculates the cost of this thing. Now out in the public for a public uh, utility to install these or a public charging network, you would hook this up either to be activated through the Autel app or through an RFID tap. Um, in theory, you could even have a kiosk with a credit card machine on it. I mean, there's plenty of different ways to wire this up that I wanna talk about. This isn't really something you would need to install in your home. It's certainly more expensive than the residential unit. I probably would. I think it's really cool. I love the screen. I love the data. Either way, both units come with the same app and the app is amazing. Um, some people now are starting to get more than one electric car at home. And by having more than one electric car at home, it means you really need to have the available uh, sort of uh, breaker connection. Your, your, uh, your box here needs to have a connection that can handle two EVSEs. Well, that's not always possible. Sometimes you may only have 50 amps to play with. The nice thing with these is you can string them together and load balance across a network. So similar to like what I have set up in my personal house, I have a, two Tesla wall connectors that are load shared. Um, you can do the same thing here with Autel. So really good stuff here. So those are the two units that we'll kind of just be getting into today a little bit. I guess um, 
let's talk more use case stuff before we dig into these. DC fast charging on the road is great. You know, we're always looking for the fastest chargers right off the highway at the most convenient locations when we're on a road trip, when we're trying to get somewhere. When I'm trying to get from A to B, if we're cannonballing, if we're doing whatever it is, we want to pull off, zap up for 10 to 15 minutes at the most, and then get back on the road and go. And Autel has products to do that, and I can't wait to make videos with them and test them. I actually think we might even be getting their 240 kilowatt DC fast charger out here for a review. So keep an eye on that. That could be super interesting. I'm excited to share that with you. But honestly, more important than DC charging is what you're gonna do every day. The 95% of the time that you spend with your car, you're not gonna be going out of your way in your day-to-day -day routine to plug in and zap up for 10 minutes. Ideally, what you would do is charge at home in your garage or charge at work or charge at your school if you're a professor or a student. Um, you know, charge when you're out shopping at the mall, for example. And Autel has a whole range of products to satisfy that need. So for example, this is one here for home charging which um, you know is perfect you can go you can configure this all the way down from 16 amps up to 50 amps like i mentioned you don't need any more at home it's a stylish unit they have a couple different versions as well which is where do you put the handle and so this one we have the built-in uh, receiver right here but there's actually and i was curious as to why they offered a off-board handle option uh, mounting option and it sounds like especially in other markets maybe not so much in the u.s um, some people end up keeping their chargers in an, in an enclosure and locking them. And that's so no one can tamper with it or no one can come and steal your electricity. Now, what's kind of cool is you can have controlled access to these chargers. So only, you know, the people you know will be able to use them, especially with RFID access on the commercial unit. But still, some people choose to put it in an enclosure by having this being able to be mounted off board rather than sticking out of the charger. Then... Um, you can just reduce the, uh, the, width, the, the width of that box, the depth of that box, I should say. So I was just curious about that. That's the reason why they have two different versions here. Um, so this, this is great. I mean, you, you wire it up. You have a great app to show you all the details. It'll tell you all your kilowatt hours throughout the month, throughout the year, throughout the, that particular charging session. And um, everyone knows why you need a level two EVSE at home. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. What I kind of want to talk about is this commercial unit over here, because this is where things get exciting. More shops and more businesses are increasingly confused when it comes to offering the right kind of AC or DC charging. For example, we're starting to see Volvo and Starbucks build out a network of DC fast chargers. The only problem is they're putting in the 62 and a half kilowatt charge point CPE 250 units that are far too slow for as long as it takes to get a drink at Starbucks on your trips. They really should be using the Express Pluses or one of Autel's high power charging situations, perhaps. There's a plenty of them out there. So it seems like the general industry is going to a point of confusion. And um, I think what's kind of cool about what Autel offers, and Tom Malagny has a great video walking you through many of their products. We have one on our channel as well, walking you through many of the products, is they have options for you, but they're all pretty simple. So this is basically the lowest power level you would want to install for your business. This is the lowest cost. This is the, it's a really nice looking unit. You can mount it on a post or on a wall and it's gonna give someone, again, up to 50 amps. We wired this one to 48 amps, which is close enough, I think, in my opinion. Most onboard chargers and vehicles are 48 amps anyway. So uh, that's probably how I would recommend you install it. And, um, you know, just putting this outside of your business, you put five or 10 in a row, whatever it is, you can have uh, a QR code for someone to roll up with the Autel app on your phone. By the way, guys, I know it sounds a little bit confusing, all these apps and stuff on your phone. As Autel, which is a brand new company uh, in the US in the charging space, they've been in the vehicle space forever, but you really should have the Autel app on your phone. I'll show you here. You can see right now we're charging. This is our situation. But when you roll up to a public Autel charger and there's a QR code, you actually need to scan that QR code in the app in the Autel app, not in, um, you know, from your regular uh, QR code scanning thing. It won't bring you to the app. So maybe there's a little bit of optimization Autel could do there, but ultimately if you have the Autel app on your phone with an account with your credit card details already in there, then you'll have that same experience like when you roll up to a charge point unit or Electrify America or, or you name it, this'll be one that you wanna have on there. I know the apps are getting crazy, but 
I hear they already have over 200 installations of chargers in the ground for public use. I think most of those are DC fast chargers as well, so probably a good thing to have. So this is perfect for coffee shops, bookstores, malls, uh, parking garages, you name it. Anything you need sort of medium speed charging out and about where someone's going to spend three, four, five hours at a time. Um, then on top of this, they have some really cool units. They have a new unit that I actually just charged on for the first time. I was at the BMW Performance Center in Greer, South Carolina. BMW actually went all in on Autel. Every parking lot has Autel level two chargers in them, which is really cool to see. And they have this one really neat product, which is a tall post with two AC charging ports on it. And both of those ports can do 80 amps at the same time. If you have the grid connection wired up, you can of course dynamically load balance and do all the things, hook it up to a lower connection. But BMW had them lined up to a hundred amp circuit on each. So if you rolled up with two F-150 Lightnings, I don't even think any BMW has an 80 amp onboard charger, so I don't know why they did that. But if you roll up with two F-150 Lightnings, you can charge both at 19.2 kilowatts. That's pretty crazy. So I love how innovative Autel's being in this space, how many new products they have coming. And uh, I really think if you're a business owner, I would consider offering AC charging with this solution here. Uh, I would prefer it, I'll be totally blatantly honest, I would go for this over the uh, charge point units. The charge point units are big, expensive. They require a service connection fee to run everything. And it's just honestly not a very good value. And they're only 30 amps typically, maybe 32 amp. This thing is small, compact, way less expensive. I'm talking seven times less expensive. It can do everything those can do. It can give you all your energy tracking. You can still bill for charging if you're a business owner and want to do that. And uh, like it's small, nice and compact and cheaper. So like, uh, I don't understand how people are still putting in those charge point stands. Charge point makes great equipment. It's very reliable, but it's just very expensive. This is the way I would recommend to go. And so uh, I hope we see more people install these. They're still a brand new company, but even here at Colton's business, you know, if he wanted to, he's not going to, but he could offer an RFID thing, put it on the outside of his business and have, and charge people to use it, but he won't. You come here to clear detailing, you get free electricity because you're paying a lot of money to get your car detailed. So that's a little bit of the difference between the residential and the commercial units in terms of level two EVSEs are concerned. Um, power levels, I, my recommendation is I always just go the maximum power that your um, existing connection will allow. Your main breaker is typically the limitation. A lot of older homes only have 100 amp service. Some newer ones have two or 300 amp service. So it's possible you might need to do, you know, some load balancing or load calculations or upgrade the service to your house. But these things are all doable. Um, just depends on how crazy you want to go. Typically, I think if you can get at least 24 to 30 amps at home, you know, you can dial everything down and max out your, your main breaker. That should be fine for most people, unless you're doing a really long commute and need to top up for the morning every day, but that's a very rare case. So, um, I think it's it's clear that Autel's in the space. It's not our first video on Autel. I think um, I'm continually impressed with their uh, with their units. I love that they adapted this cable based off of Tom's comments alone. Um, I, you know, I just saw a video with uh, John Thomas and and Tom Malagni together, and they were like, "We had changed that cable just for Tom." So I love to see it. Love to see them really involved in the EV community. Love their support of us and others in the space as well. So, um, you know, I got to say, I'm a big fan. I think the products are reliable. They're solid. The app is unbelievable. The app is the best. And uh, Colton's over here shaking his head. He's a user. So uh, Colton, thumbs up to the app. <laughs> and uh, there you go. So if you're considering a level two EVSE for home, this is the way I would go. If you're considering one for your business, I would either consider that commercial unit or you can go for one of their higher power AC options if you're interested. They also have low power DC, but that'll be for a different video. So good stuff here. Links in the description for this unit right here. Please go check that out. And uh, we can't thank them enough for uh, supporting out of spec. We love the units and uh, more stuff coming, more deep dive technical nerd stuff when we dig deeper into Autel. Thanks for watching. See you in another one soon. Bye-bye.